Okay, so I would do the whole creepy little smile thing as the intro to my video, but one, I'm pretty sure there's like millions of other videos that are doing that, and two, I just ate Oreos before this video, so I'm not gonna have y'all analyzing my teeth. We're not doing that. So regardless, this is Smile 2. Hey guys, it's your guy in the chair here, and this is my review for Smile 2, starring Naomi Scott, Kyle Garner, Lucas Gage, Ray Nicholson, and it was directed by Parker Finn. And our story follows Naomi Scott as this tremendous, huge pop star named Sky Riley, and basically she is following the same cycle as the last main character in the last Smile movie, which is... She saw someone die, and so for the next seven days, she is tormented by a bunch of smiles and things that she thinks are there but aren't really there. She can't tell what's reality at this point, and we are watching Naomi Scott basically on a deep dive into absolute insanity. That is the best way to describe this movie. That's the only way I need to describe this movie because this movie literally follows the same formula that the first one did. And while I have seen quite a few people complain about that, just gonna be real with you guys. The first smile I absolutely adored. And so for them to take the formula from the first one and literally do the same thing here, just perfect it and just turn everything up by like 10 notches. This was a perfect sequel. This is honestly better than the first movie. This movie had my jaw on the floor pause. But look, man, I'm telling you, Naomi Scott delivered one of the best performances, not only in the horror category of this year, but she delivered one of the best performances of the year in general. Like I said, watching this woman go into a deep dive into straight insanity is an absolute gift. It is a gift that we didn't even expect. Naomi Scott put her all into this role and she absolutely delivered. And beyond that, all the performances, like everybody in this movie is doing an insane job. And I definitely have to shout out Lucas Gage, who was the guy who first had the smile demon or monster creature however you want to entity however you want to describe it he was the first person to had it until he passed it on to sky riley and of course you see that in the trailer but his entire scene in the movie oh my god it's, it's amazing it's 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 so crazy watching just how tired they are and how freak out freaked out they are and like just how on edge people are like when this thing is like really haunting them and really starting to make them unsettled it's so cool to just see everybody throughout the movie perform in a way that just really gives you straight goosebumps and chills everyone and and, and i mean everyone including kyle gallner in the beginning of this movie and i will go back to naomi scott because she did an amazing job we can't get enough of me i can't stop talking about naomi scott after this movie but Kyle Gallner, who was in the last Smile movie, had five minutes in the beginning of this film here to set the tone, and he absolutely delivered. He over-delivered. The tone was set perfectly in the beginning of this movie. It completely introduced you to the same insanity the last movie left you on, but let you know immediately they might be getting a little crazier here, and I loved every second of this movie. I loved the hell hell out of Smile 2. It was so damn good. Like I said, Kyle Garner set the tone in the beginning of the movie. Then Naomi Scott, well, Kyle Garner set the tone. Lucas Gage threw up the alley-oop. And Naomi Scott does a LeBron James fast break dunk for the rest of the movie. It is a highlight film of nothing but ridiculous acting and performances. I mean, Naomi Scott, my God. Just wow. And then once you get to the end of the movie... It's just like everything she's gone through, everything she is going through. And while I do get a little, I'm not necessarily getting off topic here, but I'm steering away from Naomi Scott again for a second. What I do absolutely love about these movies is how they're not only just focusing on the entity themselves. Each movie has a theme or a message surrounding it. Like for the first one, mental health was a big theme and message in the first movie and then this one focuses on fame and addiction and recovery and things like that and Naomi Scott plays it all so beautifully even before she even receives the entity the smile entity demon whatever before she even receives it she is absolutely just playing this whole fame and addiction recovery type role just so very well I mean I really can't stop praising this woman's performance because it was just that damn good. But beyond that, beyond the performances themselves, the scares are 
I, I'll say smile. The first smile had a jump scare that I will never forget because it definitely got me. This second one here definitely has g very good jump scares. It has, and what I mean by that is it didn't necessarily make me like, oh my god, like jump, but it, it definitely made me go, oof, that that was a good one. That, that that was very creative there. They had a lot of those, and the scares in this movie are turned up by seven notches, or should I just keep it at ten? The scares in this movie are turned up by ten notches. I also really enjoyed how creative the scares got throughout the movie, how they didn't just necessarily rely on jump scare after jump scare after jump scare, how they needed other things in the movie to really just get you kind of feeling just so unsettled, like you just really can't trust what's going on here. That's what I really loved about the twist. And there are, there are quite a few twists in this movie where you completely, there's one at the end that just completely blows your entire mind. Like I'm telling you, this movie is fucking with you in the best way possible. Like that, that's what I truly enjoy about the scary part of this movie is that it's fucking with your mind. It's making you think that you can't really trust what you are seeing. You can't really believe the things that are being introduced to you plot wise because you don't know if the stuff is real. And then as Sky Riley is figuring out some stuff is real, some isn't. You're just as shocked as her, if not more. I mean, they, like, Parker Finn directed this movie beautifully. Parker Finn truly understands what these movies are. He understands the formula, and he's perfected it. I didn't even think... The first Smile movie shocked me so much. I truly didn't even know what to expect from a sequel. I didn't think it could be as good as the first one. I didn't even think it could be better, but it was it was just so much more. Top of that, the last 10 minutes of this movie, actually maybe the last 20. The last 20 minutes of this film is an absolute insane insane like what what Arkham Asylum type mental ride that I just was not ready for. Like, I completely felt like I just went ballistically crazy at the last 20 minutes of this movie, just not knowing what to believe, and then the last five minutes, which if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm referring to, but the last five minutes of this movie, oh my god, like, literally, like once the credits rolled, I could not do anything but sit there for the entirety of the credits and just be in complete awe. Because what was uh, what was accomplished here in Smile 2 was a few things. One, they showed they weren't just a one-pump chump. <laughs> That's a funny way to put that. But they showed they weren't just like a fluke. Like the first, the first Smile, I think, took a lot of people by surprise, especially me. I didn't think it was going to be as good as it was. Or at least I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I did. Or should I say love it? And this movie here showed that we know what we are doing with this formula. And we know how to perfect it. And... I couldn't do anything but applaud them for that. I loved that. I, like they took, like I said, they took everything in the first movie. They literally copied the same formula and pasted here. Yet they just add some more. They just add some more insanity and craziness and twists and turns to just make you completely go. It makes you feel like you're going crazy. That's the best thing about this movie. It makes you feel like you're going crazy. And you, you can't help but feel entertained and overwhelmed as the movie goes on. It was just so insane. And there is an actor in this movie. I cannot think of his name, but he played one of the uh, one of the fans at the at the signings. And there's a scene where he completely gets to go in her penthouse apartment. Dude, that guy, that kid deserves all the flowers in the world. His his acting was incredible, and like I said, I can't stop praising the performances enough in this movie because there are so many. Of course, you have the creepy people doing that, doing the smile, which that honestly takes a lot, and then you have all these other people who are affected by it who essentially just have to like look into a corner. There's nothing there, but they see something and the movie will show that. The movie will show a person looking to a corner. There's nothing really there, but they see something and they're freaking the fuck out. And it's just making you think, oh my God, what the fuck is over there? Like what is going on? It, it, it's so much tension. It's so many chills, so many thrills. Smile 2 ups the ante in every imaginable way that you want a sequel to up the ante and get better. It was just, it was amazing. It, it, this uh, it's so hard because The Substance was truly an amazing movie but I think at the end of the year when it comes down to it I think this will be my favorite horror movie of 2024 oh I'm sorry Nosferatu is coming out maybe not but Smile 2 is a gem Naomi Scott people are saying she she's given an Oscar worthy performance I, I won't deny that because 
Zac Efron did the exact same thing last year in Iron Claw and did not get nominated, and he was robbed. So am I going to sit here and say, Nate, are people reaching with the Oscar-worthy performance? Probably not, because Oscar-worthy performances don't always get nominated, Zac Efron. But Naomi Scott gives the best performance of her career here. She absolutely demands the screen. She demands your attention. She is a presence. Her as Sky Riley was an absolute sensation. She was in the, she is a legendary character. I think Naomi Scott should be on a lot more stuff. Don't know where she's been these past few years because I loved her as the Princess Jasmine and Aladdin and the Power Rangers movie. She probably did need to take a break after Charlie's Angels, but that's okay. But regardless, Smile 2 is the sequel that Smile fans need it to be, not want it to be. Because we just want it to be good, but we need it to be amazing. And it is. It's even better than that. It's fucking awesome. But look, guys, for all those reasons and so many more, I'm going to give Smile 2 a 4.25 out of 5 stars. Okay, guys, so Smile 2, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Look, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff and so much more. Look, this is your guy in the chair. More content coming to you soon.